Well, good morning to you. It's Wednesday morning. Another bright and sunny day. Fantastic. Last night I bought something on eBay. Yes. What do you think it is? Look, Mustang. Yes, you've guessed correctly. It was a drone or a quadcopter, if you want to call it that. I think the Americans call it quadcopters and the English call them drones. I think. So yes, I bought one. Um, it's only got a two megapixel camera on it. So what I've done is I've bought a um, a keychain, 720p HD camera, which is only five quid. So we'll see how that goes. So yes, quadcopter camera and four spare batteries. So I've got five batteries because apparently they only last about seven minutes. A lot of them do between sort of five and nine minutes. So this only lasts about seven minutes. So I've gone up in the battery to try and make it last a bit longer. And I bought four spare batteries. So that's a good half an hour's worth of flying anyway. So yeah, I bought it so I can get some nice shots of the Mustang when we're driving around and um, on private ground, obviously. So we'll see how that goes. Just wait for it to arrive now. Apart from that, hay fever's in full swing this morning. Um, a bit wheezy actually, so it's um, affecting my respiratory system and my nose is blocked, my throat is sore, my eyes are sore, so I'm doing well. Hello. You say hello. Going to Tesco's. Sweeney legs. <laughs> <laughs> Having fun? <laughs> we come back here. Yeah, they're here all the time. Look, this is the Tesco's ducks. Look, look, ducks. Tesco duck. Look. Tesco duck. This is a baby. This is a mummy dad. Right? No. I think it's the baby one. <laughs> right. Sorry. Ma. Say again. Ma. Ma. Yes. What are you talking about? Uh, yeah. Why are you shaking your pretzel? Why are you shaking your pretzel? He's not, he's nodding at you. Yeah, you're a spider! He's a spider! What is that? You want a spider! Really? He's a spider! Is that right? He's a spider! I agree. He's a spider! He's a spider! Really? Yeah! He's a spider! 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 Okay. Yeah. Morning. It's Thursday. Off to work again. We're sitting behind a crane, a very large crane. It seems to do all right when it gets up to speed, but it's like naught to forty in one minute. Brilliant. Just what you need when you're on your way to work. Stupid morning traffic. So I just got home from work. So um, I thought, uh, as it's nice and sunny, I've got some time. I'm going to go and um, fit my gas rams on my bonnet. Or my hood struts, as the Americans would say. So, got all the gear. So let's go and get it done. Okay, so what we've got here is the damper itself. Okay, and we're going to fit them on here. So it's going to screw in there and then on the top part of the bonnet or the top part of the bonnet catch uh, or holder so first of all i'm going to undo this nut here which i've started to do already we'll just put this in here and screw it back in just loosely for now. You can screw them back in using the original fender screws, but you do get the kit with it. So I'm gonna replace it with a longer screw and the two washers. So all you do is put on the serrated washer first, then put this on top. And put the normal washer on and then the screw. Look at the 
next thing is to remove this bolt here. Obviously this one stays in place, so the bonnet shouldn't move and shouldn't need any adjustment. So to remove this one and replace it with the bracket that comes with the damper, which is this one here. So that will just sit on like so. You get a sticky pad as well to stop any vibration on here. So we'll do that. So that is just put in there and stuck on. And then you tighten it up. Okay, next you take the end of the damper and the screw and you just screw it on. Very simple. Now on the car, they're the opposite ends. So what you have to do is turn it to face the other way. Okay, next with a screwdriver in the end, like so, you widen this clip in here so it'll go over this ball and slot into place. Like this. And then take the clip out, and there it is. And all you do whilst it's in, you just turn it and tighten it until it's facing the opposite way. Like that. Obviously you can't put it on at the moment because this will not push in. Obviously, because it's pressure. So you just leave it laying here for now. Then I shall tighten this up. And then do the same on the other side. And then we can lift the bonnet and push these into place. Okay, so now they're both installed. Both tightened up. On here and on here. All I need to do is remove this tatty old thing. Obviously my bonnet is still needing either replacing or fixing, recoating, whatever. But anyway, for now, this dumpy old thing. Now that should go in there, like so. Should nicely slot. In there, like that. That's solid. That's solid. So now to test it. Pull the bonnet down. like so and obviously that will shut into place so we'll do that now like that and then release lift and up we go like that and then we have gas ram installation now even talking on the video and doing it bit by bit it's only taken me 20 minutes so it's a very easy job very effective and now when i take these parts off and go and get them um hydro dipped i don't have to worry about this old thing which is about to come off thank god and now you can see the bonnet sits up higher because the gas ram pushes the bonnet up higher. It's still not as far as it can go, but that's perfect. Which means at car shows, people can see your engine bay better. And it makes it easier for working on the car. Except obviously when you want to get down the side and the gas ram's in the way. But then all you do is just clip, 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 clip and remove it. Easy job. So, very pleased with that very well worth the 36 pounds it cost me from ebay brilliant this is very simple again just another 10 mil bolt and what you do is undo that making sure to keep hold of this so it doesn't slam down on the car and then remove the whole thing which is what we'll do now yeah and that is gone and then this you can either leave in or you can pull it open and take it out now I'm going to leave it in for now, tighten it down a bit more, and then later on I'm going to clean up around here. Okay, next I'm going to be removing the strut brace. Taking that off, it's just four bolts here, four bolts here, and then taking this off. This is really easy, it just pushes down at the back, and two bolts here at the front, I believe. I don't think there's any bolts. No, it just sits underneath the, the fuel rail connection there. On both sides, one there and one there. 
very easy. Now I remember when I fitted this I had to put pack it out with washers between the plastic and the throttle body housing. So I'm going to have to make sure I get my fingers under there when I take these bolts out uh, that they don't fall down. If not, it doesn't matter. I can always get them, but I'd rather they didn't. And then this, easy, just one, two bolts, and I think there's one underneath at the back there as well. And then this will come out. And then later on, take this off as the last thing to remove. Very easy, one, two clips off. And tomorrow, these will go down to get ready to be hydro dipped. I was using the ratchet spanners to get these bolts off, but obviously a couple of them are hard to get to, so break out the big boy. 13 mil. Okay, so once the bolts are removed, this just simply comes off. You know, these bolts, very small, they're only 8 mil, so they're very easy to remove. Obviously, like I said, I'm going to, when I get to the end, I'll make sure when I pull them out, I put my hand underneath so I don't let all the um, packing washers fall out. See, so each screw is packed out with four small washers and one big washer. And obviously one fell on the floor, so with this one pound tool, magnetic tool I bought from a car boot sale, job done. Like I said with this, all it does is pull off here, and that's it. Now of course, the bolts need to be put back into the throttle body. Now removing this housing is pretty straightforward, obviously the cone has to come off first. So it's just a matter of undoing the retaining clip. So the cone comes off very easy. Now I can't decide whether to leave this on or not. I can take it off just with these Allen key nuts here, and I'm sure there's be one at the bottom. Or whether to leave it on, what do I do? Hmm, let me think. So removing one bolt here and one bolt over there, and I think that's the that's it. I thought it was gonna be one under here, but it's not, it's just held in by this. Yes, yeah, so I've decided as it's three Allen keys, I'm going to remove this and keep it black and just get this bit done. It's always good when you're doing things like this to put the bolts back in the holes, especially if you're not going to be using the car. Obviously I'm not going to be using the car because strut brace and this will be missing mostly. It's always good to put these things back in place, otherwise then, well that way, you can't lose bolts. Also give me the opportunity to clean all this because it's disgusting! So again, the bolts go back in the housing, the housing can go back in here, and then the cone can go um, on the end. And again, the reason why is that it will stop any animals or birds or any little creatures or whatever, and dust and dirt getting inside and into the throttle body. It may seem like a bit of work putting everything back again in its place, and then removing it again when you come to reinstall the new parts. But you save on looking for parts and uh, making sure you put them somewhere safe and you don't lose them. Now of course, no period of time spent on a car is complete without the cup of tea. So excuse me. Bugger off. Okay, now to remove this, the first thing you have to do with a screwdriver is just prise up this, like so. Once you've done that, you just remove the whole pin. Don't try and pull it out as one, because they will split, and then you have to buy more. Then once all those are removed, what you have to do is take it off. That simple. Yeah. Again, another good way to do this, or a good reason to do this, is to give it a damn good clean under here. And again, put them back in afterwards, just squeeze, push, in, easy. This is going to give me a great opportunity to clean all under here. 
clean all this up clean this and then paint over it I think clean all down here clean and paint this clean this up and have a quick touch up here paint the uh, bolts ready for them to go back on on the strut brace and there ready something else you shouldn't do is even though you tidy up all your tools is not to try and close the bonnet with your GoPro sitting on here because you'll break your camera luckily I didn't this time 